Um, Shabbat Shalom and welcome everyone. Um, we'll get started in a few minutes. If you are new, welcome for the first time. And I love seeing all the familiar faces. Today, in terms of props and setup, um, certainly unroll your um, mat or your blanket, your towel, whatever it is that you're practicing on. If you have access to two blocks or thick hardcover books, those will serve you really well throughout the practice today. If not, no big deal. My suggestion is that you grab a couple of blankets. Um, and if you have sensitive knees, blankets will also serve you well during our practice today. So please look around your room, <clears throat> look around your house. We're not gonna get started for another couple of minutes. So you have time to grab your props. If you got the email that I sent out um, just yesterday for our practice today, you know that part of our focus is on order. And for those of you who are cooks and chefs in the room, this idea of mise en place, um, getting all the ingredients, all your tools ready so that you can enjoy and have a, a really meaningful practice is important. So gather your blocks or your books, a couple of towels, if that will serve you better. Um, if you're practicing with towels or blankets instead of the blocks, my suggestion is to take one and roll it up like a burrito, a chimichanga, a jelly roll, whatever your food is that uh, you like best that this resembles. And we'll get started in a couple of minutes. Shabbat Shalom, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone, and welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker, and I'm both the executive director of Open Temple and also our resident yoga instructor. We're going to begin our practice today, and I always try to make an important disclaimer that as we navigate through the sequence, through the poses today, I want you to be very, very mindful of the threshold between a little bit of uh, heat, some challenge, perhaps even a bit of discomfort. Discomfort can be really healthy and pain. If you cross over that line into pain, that is your signal to back off, to go into the previous pose, to take a break, to just return to focus on your breath. Please be mindful of that distinction. That's one important framework for today. The second is that we've decided to focus our, our teaching and our learning over the course of the first couple months of 2021 on the Jewish tradition of Musar. Musar is a word that means correction or instruction. And it's interpreted as a path to human decency and kind of an answer to what are the attributes that it takes in a human being to be a mensch, to be a really good and grounded focused person. And so far over the course of our journey, we've looked at the attributes of humility and patience and gratitude. And last Shabbat, we looked at compassion and we've arrived at our next attribute and that is order which could not be a more perfect attribute to explore for a yogi. As we flow through our sequence today and the order of our poses, we're gonna be extremely mindful about setting a pace for ourselves, loosening up our joints, working on um, various aspects of our physical body to open it up so that as our sequence grows progressively more intense and involved, we can access each pose with grace and uh, dignity. So please sit with your shins crossed, inhale through your nose, and exhale out your mouth. Take a deep breath in. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Let that breath linger. 
And then stick out your tongue and exhale out your mouth. Let's do that two more times. Inhale through your nose. And an audible exhale out your mouth. Inhale. And exhale. Welcome, you've arrived. I want to dedicate this practice today in loving memory of Christopher Plummer, uh, an award-winning actor who sadly passed away. And we're going to pay tribute to one of his greatest legacies through this practice, the incredible movie Sound of Music. For those of you who are a lover of that movie, you know the song, Do Re Mi. And this idea that in order to access music, you need to be attentive to the progression of the notes, to mastering one note at a time, and to figuring out how you sequence those notes to create a beautiful piece of music. So first we focus on Do, the first note, and that is the breath. We're now gonna move into our first pose, which is gonna be a pose that will help set us up to access the poses that will come later in our practice. And that's gonna be a chest opener with Shavasana. So I'd like you to take your blocks or your rolled up blanket if you're not practicing with blocks or a book. And there are a lot of different options and I want you to experiment with the one that feels best for your body. I'm gonna suggest that you start with one block on the lowest height, about a third of the way towards the back of the mat, and your second block on the medium height. So this is the lowest height, medium, highest, and that's gonna to be towards the back of the mat. Sit with your knees crossed, up towards the ceiling, Extend your arms forward, and you're going to start to lower down onto the blocks. And you want the lower block to be resting just underneath your shoulder blades, and your head is going to go on the block behind it on the medium height. Arms are alongside your torso. Extend your legs forward. Let your ankles roll open palms up towards the ceiling and resume a slow and steady cycle of breath. And where you can experiment with this as a chest opener, if this is just a little too mild for you, you can lower the back block onto the lowest height or remove that back block altogether and rest your head on the floor. And that simple difference is going to really heighten the sensation of this chest opener. And if you're practicing without blocks, you're going to roll up your blanket and put that underneath your shoulder blades. You're going to be here for about a minute. And turn your ears, turn your attention to the sound of the breath in your body. The inhale and the exhale might begin to sound like the waves of the ocean. Breathe in and out.
Take another few cycles of breath. And bend your right knee and plant your right foot on the ground. Bend your left knee, pl plant your left foot on the ground. Turn your palms to face down. Press your forearms into the ground and start to lift your torso up. Until you're sitting up, remove the blocks. But keep them handy because we're gonna use one of them right away. And we're gonna come into Virasana, hero's pose. This is where if you have a blanket and sensitive knees, I wanna suggest that you put that blanket underneath your knees. Take your block, place it between your ankles, and then sit down onto the block. Your ankles are right by your hips. Torso is up crown of your head is reaching up towards the ceiling. I'm going to turn to face you. Knees are together. And then take your hands, grab onto your right thigh, rotate your inner right thigh down. And then do that to your left thigh, rotate it down and in. And then hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Another inhale. and exhale and interlace your fingers behind your back start with a bend in your elbow and then start to straighten your arms reach your knuckles towards the ground and open up your chest spread your collarbones and draw your shoulder blades together your arms are straight your knuckles are reaching back and down opening up your chest. Doing these chest openers are going to help us with some back bends to come. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And then switch the interlace of your fingers, bend your elbows and re-extend your arms to straight. Knuckles again, go back and down. And with your next exhale, release the interlace of your fingers. And for some of you, this might start to grow uncomfortable sitting in hero's pose. If that's the case, Please come back into Sukhasana, into a cross-legged position. Otherwise, I want to encourage you to stay in hero's pose, in Virasana. And arms out to the side, inhale, arms up. Arms frame your front ears. Take the bend out of your elbows, fingertips lift up towards the sky, and exhale, arms come down. Palms face out, inhale, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Again, palms face out, inhale, arms up. This time, keep your arms extending up towards the ceiling. Start to bend your right elbow. Your right hand comes to your upper back. Take your left hand, Grab onto that right elbow and pull the right elbow in towards your head, opening up our shoulders, working on that joint. 
inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Inhale, extend your arms up straight and exhale, arms come down. Second side, inhale, arms come up and pause as you exhale. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso to lift your arms further up towards the ceiling and start to bend your left elbow. Left hand comes down to your upper back. Take your right hand, grab onto that left elbow Pull the left elbow in towards your head and three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more inhale. And exhale, inhale, both arms lift up straight and exhale, arms come down. Return your hands to your knees, palms facing up. Let your eyes close. So one of the scholars who we are inviting into our yoga Musar conversation is named Alan Marinas a really, really wonderful scholar of Musar. And in exploring the soul trait of order, he says that order is all about the middle way. Too little order gives birth to chaos, while at the other end of the range, too much order ties us up in obsessive rigidity. The best in life lies between these extremes, and we are well advised to see that moderate course. Press your palms together in front of your chest. Take a moment for Svadhyaya, for self-assessment. And in having an honest conversation with yourself, where do you think you are on that spectrum of order? Are you on the obsessively rigid end of the spectrum? Are you on the chaotic end of the spectrum or are you somewhere in between? Through our practice today, we're gonna to flow through an order, through a sequence, but invite modifications and variations in your own freedom of expression. Inhale, and exhale, release the palms of your hand, come off the block, and let's meet in a tabletop position. Hands underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers apart, your index finger faces up towards the top of the mat. Hips are stacked above your knees. Back is in a neutral position and now inhale into cow. Lift your heart and chest up, lift your tailbone up. And exhale, round your back, belly into your chest as you come into a cat position. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Another time, inhaling into cow. And let's hold this for a few cycles of breath. And I always like to think of this cow as if I am a car with headlamps, shining those headlamps towards the front of the room. That's how much I'm opening up my chest and heart. And then exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Accentuate the spreading of your shoulder blades. 
And then with your next exhale, return to that neutral position. And if your wrists are particularly sensitive, now is a good time to grab both of your blocks. I'll demonstrate that. Put your hands on your blocks. And we're gonna tuck our toes, lift your hips up and back, and come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale and spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Remember when we were in Virasana and we rolled our inner thighs down, that's essentially what you're doing on your own, rolling your inner thighs in and towards the back of the room. One more inhale. And as you exhale, shift your body forward into plank. Press back through your heels. A modification for plank is always to bend your knees and have them on the ground. You do you. And then with your next exhale, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. So inhale forward into plank. And these modifications in order are so important. You don't want to push yourself into the traditional pose and land in a space of chaos because it's not right for your body. So bending your knees and lowering them down is a wonderful example of breaking with the rigidity of order to find balance. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. And then inhale, shift forward into plank. Lower your knees onto the ground. If your hands are on the blocks, put them off to the side. And then lower your chest to the ground and lower your pelvis to the ground. We're gonna do a series of chest openers and back bends here. Untuck your toes. Walk your palms back so that they're parallel to your upper ribs, hug your elbows into your chest, and then inhale, root down through your palms, lift your heart and chest up into Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Inhale, and exhale, lower down. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up, low Cobra, Bhujangasana, and exhale, lower down. Inhale, heart and chest come up. And pause here for a moment. Draw your shoulder blades together. Keep your gaze towards the ground, but a couple of inches in front of you. And then exhale, lower your chest down, lower down onto your forehead. Pause for a moment. Extend your right arm towards the back of the room, your left arm towards the back of the room. And we're gonna to start to move forward into Shalabhasana, locust pose. Inhale, lift your forehead up, lift your chest up, keep your feet on the ground, keep your hands on the ground, and exhale, lower down. And in our sequence, we're gonna to start to add on, make this a little bit more vigorous. Inhale, lift your head up and lift your feet up. Remember that rotation of spinning your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Do that now. One more inhale and exhale, lower down. Pause, turn your cheek to the right. And as we flow through these different variations, be mindful of your own threshold and feel free to stick with the previous version of the pose if that has stretched you to your limit today. Turn your gaze back down towards the ground. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Lift your feet up. 
and now lift your arms up. This is our kind of reverse superhero flying through the sky. Inhale and exhale. And inhale, remember that rotation of your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. And exhale, one more inhale, lifting your heart and chest up just a little bit more. And exhale, lower down. Turn on to your left cheek and pause for a moment. Let's take one cycle of breath. And now turn your gaze back down towards the ground. I want you to interlace your fingers behind your back, have a bend in your elbow. And now inhale, head up, heart and chest up, feet up and extend your arms back. Take the bend out of your elbows, knuckles go towards the back of the room, press your palms together. Keep your gaze down towards the ground and really be mindful of spreading your collarbones, drawing your shoulder blades together. One more inhale and exhale lower down. And we're going to add on one more step as an option. Release the interlace of your fingers if you want to add on more. Bend your right knee, lift your right shin up into the air. Bend your left knee, lift your left shin up into the air. Extend your arms back alongside your torso. Draw your ankles towards your tush and at the same time try to grab onto both ankles. And remember, you always have the option of sticking with the previous pose. And now inhale, heart and chest up, knees up, and you're in Dhanurasana, bow pose. Inhale as you spread your collarbones and exhale. Inhale to draw your shoulder blades together and exhale. Inhale, lifting your heart and chest just a little bit higher into the air and exhale, knees come down, release your hands from your ankles, let your feet go back down onto the ground, stack one hand on top of the other underneath your forehead, making a pillow, and then just start to rotate your hips from right to left and left to right. and pause. In a moment, we're going to do Yogi's Choice, where you're going to pick the version of this back bend, this chest opener, that interests you the most. And in full transparency, in the spirit of order, think about the steps we've taken to build up momentum in this pose and how those steps have served you well. In other words, can you imagine that the first pose we did on our bellies was bow pose? That would be going from do to the highest note, the highest octave possible without the steps in between. So Yogi's choice, you decide which version of the pose you wanna do and inhale, Lift up. We're going to hold it for three cycles of breath. So exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, lift up just a little bit higher, and then exhale, release. Take your forearms in front of you, press them into the ground. Come up onto your elbows, lift your heart and chest up into Sphinx pose. And again, return to this idea of your chest having on it a set of headlamps beaming towards the front of the room. Draw your shoulder blades together. Three cycles of breath. 
Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Start to lower your chest down. Press your palms into the mat by your middle ribs, fingertips towards the front of the room. Hug your elbows into your chest. And inhale, lift your heart and chest up, back into low cobra. If you're ready to move on, press your palms into the mat, lift your knees up, straighten your arms into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog. Pause for a couple cycles of breath. And then tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Turn your gaze between your palms. Step your right foot forward. Step your left foot to meet it. You're in Uttanasana, a forward fold. Start with a bend in your knees. Interlace your fingers behind your back. This action should be very familiar by now. Straighten your arms. Reach your knuckles up towards the ceiling. And then start to straighten your legs. You can take the bend out of your knees or keep a micro bend in them. Crown of your head is reaching down towards the ground. Switch the interlace of your fingers, press your palms together. Notice that that will help you to draw your shoulder blades together. And then release the interlace of your hands, hands on your hips, elbows coming towards each other behind your back and slowly roll yourself up, but keep your gaze down on the ground, coming up one vertebra at a time till you find yourself in Tadasana, in mountain pose, arms alongside your torso, palms face towards the front of the room, and pause to breathe. So this idea of bringing order to our lives, I think the wisdom carries a few different benefits that I wanna make sure to highlight as we proceed through our practice. So first of all, staying organized, staying in order, helps you to move forward, helps you on a progression of life. Secondly, there are many things in life, our bodies included, that can only work properly if they are arranged in a certain manner. Our bodies are kind of like a machine in that way. And then more emotionally, a sense of order can yield inner satisfaction and confidence that prepares us to face the world. So we're gonna continue with our order, standing in Tadasana in mountain pose. Let's start with a few half sun salutations. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Back is flat, hand is on your shins or your ankles, or they might be on the ground. Exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. And then inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms come down in Tadasana. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward. 
Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, Utita Hastasana, and exhale, arms come down. Last time, inhale, arms up, exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up, exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms come down. So now with those first motions kind of in a rhythm, we build on, the sequence progresses into a full sun salutation. Inhale, arms come up, exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it. Your hands are either on the towel or blocks if your wrists are compromised. And you can bend your knees and lower them onto the ground for a modification and plank. Moving on, inhale, shift your torso forward. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower halfway down into Chaturanga. And then inhale, roll over your toes into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Upward facing dog. And then with your next exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Another inhale, turn your gaze between your palms, step your right foot forward. Step your left foot to meet it. You're in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down into Tadasana. So returning for just a moment to this idea of music and the notes, do, re, mi. We spent the first part of our practice just warming up, concentrating on one movement at a time. And it's that progression that makes a series like a sun salutation more accessible. We're able to move forward in it with more style and grace than we would otherwise if that was the first thing we did when we stepped onto the mat. I'm gonna do it another couple of times. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, left leg back. Right leg to meet it, plank position. Shift your torso forward. Bend your elbows, lower halfway down. Inhale, roll over your toes. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. And exhale, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Three cycles of breath. As you inhale, root into your palms and lift up through your arms. And exhale. Inhale, trace the energy from your wrists through your arms, through your torso, shooting out through your hips. And exhale, and inhale, turn your gaze between your palms, step your left foot forward, step your right foot to meet it, Uttanasana, forward fold, inhale, halfway up, exhale, folding forward, inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms down, Tadasana. I'm going to pause for just a moment. I want to share an analogy 
that Rabbi Shlomo Wolbe says about this idea of order as part of Nusar, Musar. And he compares it to the clasp of a necklace, of a pearl necklace, and says that the pearls are what make the necklace. They're definitely the most important part. They're the treasure, the gem. But without the clasp tying it together, the necklace falls apart, the pearls fall off, and you're left with just the string. So it's critical that we each reflect on what are those elements, those devices in our lives that help us maintain order. And the clasp of a necklace in the context of a yoga class is your breath. The inhale and the exhale is what allows you to keep that pearls, to keep the poses together without falling apart. So we're gonna do one more sun salutation A, really emphasizing the breath. That's the clasp that brings order and holds the pieces together. Standing in Tadasana, inhale, arms up, exhale, folding forward, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway up, exhale, Uttanasana, Inhale, bend your knees, flatten your palms, step back into plank position or modified plank. And inhale, shift your torso forward. Exhale, bend your elbows, lower halfway down into Chaturanga. Inhale, roll over your toes, lingering in Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, because we're preparing for more back bends, more chest openers. So inhale and exhale, draw your shoulder blades together. The modification is to have your knees on the ground. It's not gonna take away from this being a chest opener. So don't worry, practice humility. And then tuck your toes. As you exhale, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Couple more cycles of breath. Turn your gaze between your palms. Inhale, step one foot forward. Step your second foot to meet it. Your Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway up. Exhale, Uttanasana, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, Tadasana. Step your feet about three or four feet apart. Come onto the horizontal angle of your mat. Toes angle in slightly, heels angle out. Start with your hands on your hips. Prasarita Padottanasana. Inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, fold forward. Release your fingertips onto the ground. And if you can't get your hands on the ground, widen your feet further apart or grab onto a block. And then you can start to lower your crown of your head down towards the ground. And breathe in. Hands back on your hips. Draw your elbows in towards each other. And then lift your torso up. And now Rotate your entire right leg out towards the right side of the room. Angle your back foot in slightly and align your front heel with the arch of your back foot. 
and inhale, arms out into a T position. Exhale, bend into your right knee, anchor down into your back foot, and then bend your right elbow, lower your right forehand on top of your right thigh, rotate your top arm up. This is a modified Parsvo Konasana, side angle pose. And then bend your top elbow, turn your palm towards the back of the room and lower your top arm in back of your chest and hook the hand onto your inner right thigh. This is a great way in a side angle pose to also open up our chest. And if you're a more experienced and flexible practitioner, you can come into the traditional version of Parsvo Konasana, where you lower your right hand onto the ground outside of your right foot, opening up your chest towards the side of the room. Couple more cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms back out in a T position, briefly passing through warrior two, straighten your front leg, hands on your hips, and angle your right foot back in. So you're back in this wide-legged full uh, stance, and we're gonna do Prasarita Padottanasana C, another wide-legged forward fold. This time you're gonna take your hands, interlace them, behind your back, right above your tailbone. So start with your elbows bent and then inhale, lift your heart and chest up and exhale, start to hinge at your hips, torso comes down towards the ground and then start to straighten your arms, take the bend out of your elbow, float your knuckles up towards the ceiling Release the crown of your head down towards the ground and breathe. And switch the interlace of your fingers and be mindful of spreading your collarbones and drawing your shoulder blades together. That's the chorus of this song. Two similar actions that are so important for chest openers and back bends. And then root into your feet, lift your torso up. And let's take Pars Vokanasana side angle pose on your other side. Rotate your entire left leg towards the left side of the room. Rotate your back foot in slightly. See that you have heel to arch alignment in your feet, meaning your front heel is aligned with the arch of your back foot. Arms out into a T position. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, start to bend into your left knee, passing briefly through warrior two. And then bend your left elbow, lower your left forearm onto your left thigh, rotate your top arm up, and then right away, turn your top palm towards the back of the room, bend that elbow, lower your top arm down behind your mat, your back, take your hand and grab onto the inner part of your left thigh, so this is a modified Parsvo Konasana. Here's where we're breaking a little bit with the order. This is not what the pose looks like in the book, but this is what's gonna help us with our next set of back bends. And if you're a more advanced practitioner, you can lower your left hand onto the ground outside of your left foot you're gonna take two more cycles of breath. Inhale. 
and exhale. One more inhale and exhale. Root into your feet, rise back up into warrior two, straighten your left leg, hands on your hips and rotate your left foot so that it's parallel with your right. I'm gonna do one more version of a wide-legged forward fold, coming back to what we did towards the start of the practice. Inhale, arms out into a T position. Lift your right arm up into the air. Bend your right elbow, lower that right hand onto your upper back. And this time, bend your left elbow and rotate it down in back of you and either grab on to your shirt and pull in opposite directions. Your right hand pulls up, your left hand pulls down. Or if you can interlace your fingers, if you can grab them on like the clasp of that pearl necklace, do so. But the real clasp is in our breath. So inhale, lift your heart and chest up. And then exhale, start to fold forward lowering your chest down towards the ground. Distribute the weight of your body evenly in your feet. One more inhale. And exhale, torso comes up. Your right elbow reaches up towards the ceiling and release your hands from behind you and arms come back out in a T position. Right away, second side. Inhale, left arm up towards the ceiling. Exhale, bend your left elbow, lower your left hand onto your upper back. Bend your right elbow, loop your right hand in back of you. Grab onto your shirt and pull in opposite directions or grab onto your fingertips. You do you. Inhale. Lengthen up through your torso and exhale, hinging at your hips. Torso lowers down to be parallel with the ground. Couple cycles of breath. And then inhale, root into your feet, rise up. Release your hands from behind your back, arms out into a T position, and then hands on your hips and step your feet together. Return to Tadasana at the top of the mat. Arms by your torso. And let's take a few cleansing cycles of breath. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Do that a few more times at your pace. And we recognize that as much as we might strive for order, many things are beyond our control. we're living in a particularly chaotic, disruptive time. And one way that we can stay grounded is through the cycle of breathing. Just the inhale and the exhale, that intentional rhythm can slow down the chaos and help us to preserve as much order and integrity as possible. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, plant your palms into the ground, come into a squat and then come onto your knees and return to a version of Virasana. This time have your ankles together. 
And we're going to pause for a moment so that you can set up of your mise en place in place. If your knees are sensitive, now is the time to return to sitting up on a blanket or a towel. If you're practicing with blocks or books today, place one in between your ankles and then sit back on it. And we're ready for our peak pose. So we're bringing the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti together. And the great news is you have already done it. Every single thing that we're going to do as part of our peak pose, which is Ustrasana, camel pose, you've already done over the course of the practice in forms that are more accessible. So I'm going to demonstrate the, the traditional version of the pose, and then we're going to break it down and do a couple of modifications building up to the traditional form. So I'm going to start sitting up on, standing up on my knees. And my toes are untucked. I'm going to start with my hands on my hips. And I'm going to rotate my inner thighs towards the back of the room. I'm going to inhale to lengthen up through my torso, putting all these parts together. I'm going to reach my arms in back of me. And as I lift up, I'm going to bend in my upper back and reach my fingertips onto my heels, press my thighs and hips forward. And this is Ustrasana, camel pose. And then I'll exhale and come up and sit back. So the truth is you've already done this lying down on the blocks with the chest opener. We did it lying down on our bellies when we did Dhanurasana, when we did bow pose. And we've been working so much on opening up our chest. So we're putting all those component parts together. Let's do it. And we're gonna do it in a few different phases. So stand up on your knees. We're gonna do one modification first. Start with your hands pressed into your lower back. Fingertips pointed towards the ground. And then inhale, press your palms into your lower back just above your tailbone. Lift your torso and heart up. And then start to bend your upper back towards the back of the room. You're pressing your palms forward. Spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Then let your head drop back and inhale, exhale, come up through your torso and sit back down. That's version one. And if that was plenty opening for you, that's the version that you're gonna stick with. Modification two, come back up onto your knees, tuck your toes, that's gonna lift your heels up higher into the air and make them more accessible to your fingertips. Hands on your hips, spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Inhale, lengthen up through your chest and heart. Extend your arms in back of you and start to bend your upper back towards the back of the room. Place your fingertips on your heels, press your front thighs forward, draw your shoulder blades together. There's that action that we've worked on so much over the course of the class. And then, only then, do you let your head release towards the back of the room. Two more cycles of breath, inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale, push off your heels, torso comes up and sit down on the block. Great job. I'm going to do the final version of the pose, which is the traditional one that I demonstrated at the start. You might be sticking with one of the modifications, which is totally cool. Come up onto your knees. This time, keep your toes untucked, which means your heels are lower down. 
Start with your hands on your hips. Spin your inner thighs towards the back of the room. Press your front thighs forward. And then inhale, lift your heart and chest up. Arms come back towards your heels. Bend your upper back, lower your fingertips onto your heels. Press your front thighs forward. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And one more inhale. And exhale, push off your heels. Come up and return to sitting down on your heels on the block. Pause for a moment. Just start to rotate your shoulders towards the back of the room. And switch directions, rotate them forward. And then come off of your block. Great job. And as part of our cool down, we're going to do one more version of a back bend. Bend your knees, plant your feet on the ground, arms come out in front of you, and start to lower down one vertebra at a time onto your back. Arms come down, walk your heels in until they touch your fingertips. So your arms are alongside your torso, fingertips towards the front of the room. Stop when your heels touch your middle finger. And we're gonna come into Setu Bandhu Sarvangasana, bridge pose. And we're gonna do a few versions of this. So version number one, if you know that you want a more relaxing cool down, you can do a restorative version of the pose. And when we lift our hips up, you'll slide your book or block underneath your tailbone or your lower back. That's one version that you can take. The other is without the block and that's what I'm gonna demonstrate. So inhale, lift your hips up, start to snuggle your shoulders underneath you, interlace your fingers. Here we are again with those fingers interlaced, your knuckles reach towards the front of the room. Spin your inner thighs down. That's what we've been doing this whole time. Press your knees forward and then lift your hips up just a couple more inches. And let's take five cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. One more inhale. Oh, that's three cycles. Just kidding. Two more cycles left to go of breath. And with your next exhale, release the interlace of your fingers and lower your hips back down onto the mat. Take your shoulders out from underneath you. Walk your feet towards the edges of the mat and let your knees knock in towards each other, come into constructed rest. And take a few cycles of breath. And in a moment, we're gonna move on. And you're going to have Yogi's Choice available to you. You can come into the restorative version of this pose with the block underneath your hips. You can repeat bridge pose without the block. Or if your inner warrior is still fired up and you wanna try upward facing bow pose, Urdhva Dhanurasana, you can join me. And you also have the option of just staying in this constructive rest. 
So if you're going to take another version of the back bend, come up again into bridge pose for five cycles of breath, and then come down. If you're coming into upward facing bow, lift your arms up into the, towards the ceiling, bend your elbows, flatten your palms by your ears. Your fingertips are facing towards your shoulders. Draw your elbows towards each other so that they're straight up towards the ceiling. And you're gonna inhale, lift your hips up, and then come on to the crown of your head. Take another inhale and exhale. And then with your next inhale, press your palms into the ground, straighten your arms, knees come towards the front of the room. Take a few cycles of breath. And then lower your chin towards your chest. Come back down onto your head. Release your palms from the ground, arms back up to the ceiling, arms alongside your torso. And breathe. If you were up in bridge pose, you're now back down. And then stack your right ankle, your right knee on top of your left knee. Draw your knees into your chest. Shift your hips towards the right edge of the mat and let your knees descend to the left. Right arm extends out towards the right. Your gaze comes to the right and I suggest you take your left hand, grab onto your top knee. Let's take a twist. Knees come back up towards the ceiling. Unstack your knees and then stack in the other direction. Left knee on top of your right knee. Knees come into your chest. Shift your hips towards the left side of the mat. Knees come down to the right, the height of your hips. Your right hand on your top knee. And then turn your gaze and arm out to the left. Few cycles of breath. Then lift your knees back up towards the ceiling. Unstack your knees, feet on the ground. Extend your right leg forward, your left leg forward. Arms alongside your torso, palms face up. Let your ankles roll open and settle into Shavasana, the final resting pose. Come back to that breath as your organizing principle. Feel the weight of your shoulders descending into the ground. Trace a sinking sensation down your spine, towards your hips, through your legs.
Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. Let your knees fall over to the right side of the room. Come on to the right side of your torso. Pause for another moment. Press your palms into the ground and push yourself up into a seated position, Sukhasana, one shin stacked in front of the other. Hands on your knees, palms facing up. I want to return to this idea of order as an attribute that leads to human decency. In my studying of Musar, what I want to share with you is that one of the most compelling arguments for the virtue of order in our lives that I encountered was how order plays with the Jewish value of Baal Tashchit. Baal Tashchit is a value of not being wasteful, not destroying. And I think the wisdom of order is that when we have order in our lives, when we follow a progression, when we're intentional with our actions, we ultimately preserve time and space to flow through those more mechanical movements in life and to optimize the time and space we have to be in relationship with the world. When we're not wasting time arranging things and being scattered, we can be present for ourselves. We can read, we can listen to music, we can be with our family and friends. So in practicing humility and in recognizing that there are bigger things in the world, we take a little bit of time to be organized so that we can prioritize things that are more important to us. Press the palms together in the center of your chest and let your mind settle perhaps on a dimension of your life that could use a little bit more organization? Is there a way that you are unconsciously wasteful? Where if there was a little bit more order in one element of your life, you could lean more into another element. Inhale. Elongate through your torso, lower your chin to your chest and exhale. And then lift your gaze. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom.